MSB here, and today I'll be going over how to get all the secret campaign exclusive cards from special encounters. While there are many ways to take down each of the encounters, I'll be showcasing variants of the Mono Diamond deck I covered in the two videos shown here, as this deck is easy to pilot and excellently positioned to take you through future PDE content. So let's get started! Adventure Zone 1 has a few exclusive cards to find which you can only earn once per playthrough. Two of them require mostly straightforward wins, Contract Killing from the second Killipede encounter, and Voracious Vulture from the Thorn Knight encounter in the Tome of the Rose Knights dungeon. And both of these can be done with a level 8 mono diamond deck previously mentioned and listed in the notes below. In a previous video, I showed you how to get the Kiss of the Princess card from the Hag Sorceress by reverting Princess Daphne, which is pretty easy to do by adding cards like Reversion and Diamond Infusion Device to this deck. The first the first campaign exclusive card that requires more planning, though, is the Piranha Swarm card from the aptly named Swarm of Piranhas Encounter, the fight that's the bane of every new player's first campaign run, where so many fish get thrown at you, you'll think you're fighting New Zealand. First, save the base deck as a template to make sure you can refer back to it after this fight. Then take out the Adamantian Scriveners, Chimera Guard Officers, Ardent Recruiters, Incantations of Righteousness, Soul Slavers, Solitary Exiles, Mesa Totemists, and one Diamond Shard from the main deck adding in 3 Heroic Inspiration with Weapon Equipment, 3 Spear Bound Spy, 3 Stinging Ambush, 3 Guard Dog, 2 Immortality, 3 Shard Ward, 3 Binding Light, and equipping the Adaptatron's chess piece. Always save the new deck as a different template first, just in case a future encounter requires similar mechanics. You want to have at least one Shard Ward, Immortality, or Blinding Light, and one Stinging Ambush either in your opening hand or within your first two drawn cards. If you don't land this, I normally recommend you restart the encounter, as there's no disadvantage to restarts. Eventually, you'll land the most amazing board state swing in all of TCGdom, with your fighters finishing the fricasseeing of the furiously foul fish. Then, after the encounter, reload the main deck template, and next up is the Wormoid Hydra card from the Wormoid Queen encounter. From the main deck, take out Ardent Recruiters, Pious Paladins, Soul Slavers, Mesa Totemists, and one Diamond Shard, adding in three Star Shields, three Benediction, three Shard Ward, and three Blinding Light. Don't forget to save a template, of course. Now, this encounter can be painful, so like a Band-Aid, I think the best way to do this is just to let her rip. Grab all 60 gnomes from the camp and then run right up the middle. For your opening hand, you really only need a Righteous Paladin, with the hope of drawing one of the many Protect the Paladin cards in your deck eventually. This, along with two or three resources, is enough to ride out the encounter. Tons of life gained later, and this Sandworm will be the one having to recite the Litany Against Fear as your Paladin goes Muad'Dib on its ass. Load the main template, and it's on to the last encounter. The worst, most frustrating fight. Level 6, Army of Myth for the Spectral Caller card. The level 6 Army of Myth encounter has unique troops coming out of its ears, and there'll be times when the combination of troops it gets makes the encounter flat out unbeatable. Ugh. What the? Oh! Jackass. So from the base deck, take out the Chimera Guard Officers, Sealed Tombs, Ardent Recruiters, Incantations of Righteousness, Pious Paladins, Soul Slavers, and Mesa Totemists, adding 3 Star Shields, 3 Benediction, 2 Immortality, 3 Repel, 3 Blinding Light, 3 Inner Conflict with Weapon Equipment, and 1 Extra Diamond Shard. For your opening hand, you'll likely need one or maybe two Righteous Paladins with an Adaptatron or a couple of combat tricks in your first few draws. Like I said, this fight is the worst because you'll have to contend with up to five new unique troops per turn. A monumental task. Restarting this encounter will happen. A lot. Save your removal for the soul-crushing uniques like Exile Bard, Periwinkle, Argus, Grant the Infinite, or a few other terrible ones. If your opponent gets Ozawa, there is a chance for him to deck himself out if he also gets a Balthazar, so you can always chump block and pray to RN Jesus. Janky luck aside, if you weather the initial storm, eventually your healing will stabilize you and your paladins will be able to swing and kill multiple troops when you use your combat tricks correctly, eventually growing them to ridiculous levels. When the myth has finally been busted, you'll have your Spectral Caller. As previously mentioned, the Mono Diamond deck isn't the only way to beat these encounters. With some patience and encounter restarting though, this guide can show you the types of mechanics in your shard to use in these puzzle-like fights in this and future PvE content. Thanks for watching! If you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe. And, as always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.